Hey there, and welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brain's player too. Here at Play Noggin, we take a closer look at the scientific concepts inside your favorite video games. Remember me? Is the game we're playing this week. I'm not worried that you don't remember me. Remember Me takes place in a futuristic utopia, but you'll never believe this, something sinister is actually going on below the surface. Yeah, who saw that coming? In this world, scientists for an evil corporation called Memorize have fully deciphered how memories work. Now memories themselves can be uploaded and shared with anyone, and traumatic memories can be erased. Some people become addicted to absorbing other people's memories, to the point their bodies degrade and they become known as leapers. When we meet Nilan, our protagonist, she's just about to have her memories wiped by Memorize because she's part of a rebel group that wants to dismantle the company's surveillance state. So how likely is this future? Has it already happened and the government has modified our memories so we don't remember? Yeah, I don't know about that. But to better understand this, let's take a look at how we make and store memories in the brain. Our brains are sometimes likened to computers because they take in so much information and handle so many processes, but in reality, our brains are an order of magnitude more complicated than that. They store memories not as distinct wholes, but as complex constructions made up of our experiences. For example, if I tell you to think about a shoe, you can probably picture one, but it's more than just the shape that your brain can store and conjure up at will. Every component of a shoe, from its soles to the laces to the sound the shoe makes walking on gravel, is stored in a different part of the brain. Parts of the brain that deal with language, vision, even emotion if you pictured Crocs and were filled with blind rage. Bad news, because everyone in the future wears Crocs. When you summon up a memory, an infinitely complex process kicks off that gathers all these separately stored pieces of information and delivers them to you. And it happens almost instantly. Our scientists today still don't fully understand how the brain does this, so Memorize's future scientists are ahead of us on this one. But we're making strides. We know a lot about how memories are formed and stored, and it's not as simple as writing ones and zeros to a hard drive. When you have a new experience, every aspect of that experience is delivered via your senses to the hippocampus, where the new memory is processed. Next, the hippocampus, along with the frontal cortex, analyze the sensory inputs to determine which components, if any, are worth storing long term. The memory is then encoded to the brain with electricity and chemicals. Your nerve cells are connected to each other at various points called synapses, and this is where the magic happens. Electrical pulses travel down the neuron to a synapse where a chemical called a neurotransmitter is released. These neurotransmitters float across the small gap at the synapse and attach to neighboring cells. This is how your neurons communicate, and as you learn things, your neurons form Form new connections that will get stronger with repeated use. If this is news to you, then it literally just happened in your own brain when you learned this. <laughs> I made your brain do stuff. But while we understand the basics, scientists admit there's still a lot we don't know about how our brains create, store, and retrieve memories. The brain is just so incredibly complex that coming up with an easy to understand map of its processes isn't possible right now. So how does Nilan alter people's memories, outside of, you know, just saying science fiction shenanigans? Is it really possible to alter a memory? It's important to realize that our memories are not set in stone, they're actually pretty malleable. Every time you recall an experience, you reshape it a bit, and you're left with a stronger but slightly altered version of that memory. It's a process known as reconsolidation, and it can contribute to things like phobias and post-traumatic stress disorder. If you were involved in a bad car accident, for example, each time you remember it in detail, you may contribute feelings of fear and memories of physical pain, which are then encoded into the memory, layering on until you could end up too afraid to even get in a car. So one approach to altering human memories is by changing the emotional response associated with the memory. Experiments have shown that when the neurotransmitter that causes the fight-or-flight response, norepinephrine, was blocked in the brains of people with traumatic memories, they can disassociate the memories from negative emotions. Dylan basically does this in Remember Me except the other way around. She changes her opponent's memories so they have a different emotional response to them. She remixes them by essentially changing specific details so their memories of the outcome differ from reality. In fact, we've all likely done that very thing to ourselves. Researchers studied pairs of twins, asking them to recount specific memories from their childhood. Many of them had vivid memories of events that had happened to them, such as finding a worm in their food at a restaurant. In other words, something you'd definitely remember, only to learn that it hadn't really happened to them, it had happened to their sibling. Neuroimaging studies of false memory show increased activity in the hippocampus as well as within the amygdala, which is part of the brain responsible for emotional memory. This suggests that emotion and social pressure play a big role in how false memories are formed. Our research today suggests that yes, memories can be altered, particularly the emotional side of things. 
We may not yet know how to use technology to overload someone's memory. I guess that's like filling their brains with cat memes or something. But we're on our way to eternal sunshine at the spotless mind levels of memory manipulation. Remember Me takes place in the year 2084, and with our current rate of scientific advancement, it's not outside the realm of possibility for technology like that to come around in the next six or seven decades. Though hopefully the FDA steps in to regulate things so we don't end up with a leaper problem. Hey, thanks for watching Playnog, and if you like what you saw, remember to like this video and subscribe for even more videos that dive deep into the science behind your favorite video games. If if you want to know if genetic memory is possible, check out our video on Assassin's Creed here, leave your suggestions for games you'd like to see us cover in the comments, and don't forget to keep on playing.